Well, welcome to another part of the Rail tool. This part we're going to look at how to use it in Unreal Engine. So here I have an Unreal project open and I've also loaded in my models that I want to use. So these three types of models to so do a large, medium and small model. And of course my digital assets. So you can already see that I have placed my models here in the scene as like previewing. Uh, and in a moment I will talk a bit more about that. So of course, before we start, make sure your Houdini engine is here enabled at the top and you have everything ready to go with that. Then we can already just grab our tool and drag it in the scene. So by default, it probably won't do much. It will just give a basic Houdini icon. And in this interface now, we can go here to our inputs. We can also see that we have our parameters like we would have normally in, in Houdini. And for our inputs, we want to say that we want to input curves and now we will change this to an actual cube. So this is right now just our template that we actually built and we'll actually place it a bit higher so you will see it. And this rail tool is of course made to make like very large rails because the rails of the train are pretty large in the scene. So if I now would grab a point of that curve and draw it, you can see that will now copy here three cubes. So you can kind of see it because of the weird normals going on because we did not uh, assign any normals in Houdini for that. So here, if we bend this like so, you can see that we can quickly now create like a very nice curve or rail for our train. So that all works fine. So of course, realistically seen like the trains will not take that uh, much of a curve because our terrain is pretty large. It's probably like the size of like this one block. So, so it will actually not be able to make that curve. So we can just quickly grab and make it a bit better and so on. So we can see that our tool is actually sort of already working. I can play around here with the settings. So we have like the large, medium and small sizes. So they are eight, four and one. They're actually representing here the uh, approximate size. So here, so here we can see that the approximate size is 800 units, which is then actually eight units in Houdini. So there is a hundred units between difference between the software. And this is then the same for this one. So this is then four and this is then one, or it's a little bit bigger than one. So we have eight, four, one. So those are like the basic units that I'm having. So again, if you have other models with different units, you're going to have to change that. Then we have, of course, this, the scaling option, if you want to scale it, so you can see that that works. Uh, maybe you can go here, test the amount of rails. Like you can see, we can add more of them. We can space them bigger or larger from each other. So that all works as expected. So now how can I actually, for example, then use one of these models and place them on the right position? So these are now my models and what I want to do is I want to get a reference or a link of that. So I'm going to right click and I want to say copy a reference. Then we're going to jump back into Houdini and we're going to open here our tool and we are basically are not going to use this system anymore with the copy two points. This is mainly for previewing. We're going to now switch to purely outputting points or instances. So here we are just going to output uh, points as final result. So on each of these points, I will have to say what model is represented by the points. We can use a node called instancing uh, uh, attributes here. So instance attributes. And here in the path, first of all, we're going to paste uh, the path that we just copied. So in this case, as you can see, it's called SkyTrain large piece. This is just referencing to that model. Furthermore, we want to also enable here attribute instancing for Unreal because we are using Unreal. You can also do it for Unity. So make sure you enable that. So in our uh, attributes here, if I would look at my attributes, you will see that we will now have an Unreal instance with that information. That's basically all we have to do here. Uh, there are some other things we can do, like set scaling and rotations. So in case you want to tweak that or add run or add variation, we can quickly add randomization and scales or uh, in rotations and tweak that. Uh, there are some options for guides and cleanup. So let's already just grab my tool, make sure to press uh, save and go back to Unreal. When in Unreal, we're going to go back and we're going to re click recook or rebuild. So one of the two buttons will do. And as you can see, like now we are actually outputting those models. So that's all working as expected. 
Now on these other points, you can actually see that there are actually just cubes copied on it and they are cubes with a question mark. So basically Houdini doesn't know what to do with this point. So we are importing these points, but we don't necessarily know what model to use. So we're also gonna then copy the paths of that and paste it on the correct point on the correct point. So let's do that here as well. So right click, copy a path or reference. Then we're gonna basically go here. We're gonna grab this instancing node. We're gonna copy it, place it over here, overwrite the path with our own path. So the medium variant. And I'm gonna do this then one more again. So in Unreal, we're gonna right click, copy the reference. In Houdini, we're gonna copy paste the attribute node. And we're gonna remove the pad and place our own pad. So this is then the small tree. So back again here, click save and test it out again. We're gonna click recook. And now we should be able to see a version like so. Like we are now covering this whole rail system with instancing. So I can now again quickly grab these points and play around with them, make like an interesting rail for the train. Um, so yeah, you can just play around with that and create an interesting rail set setup. So you can always go into our tool settings. You can like play around with the scale if you want to make them like wider, if you want to make the height wider, if you want to tweak the, the other scalings, you can play around with those things. Uh, you can also add a duplicate. So now we have two of them. So there are two, two trains coming in this direction and you can start tweaking that value. Well, we can also quickly add this, for example, a supporting structure here in the middle, for example. So let's say that we need some support to hold this up in the air. Let's create something for that. So I don't necessarily have like a model here for that. So we can make something like a block out temporarily. So I can just grab a cube. I can just place the cube here somewhat like so and make it like a decent sized version of that. So maybe something like so and then another copy and rotate it. And we can, for example, place it like this. So with those cubes selected, we can just go here. We can say make a blueprint from selection. We can just use harvest, harvest components. And we can just say, for example, like this is my block out for uh, the support rail. And press save. And now we will have like a blueprint here like so. So often when you're making tools, you will not have the models already available because the artist might still be working on the models. So you can, for example, work with templates and then they can just plug and play their own uh, models in there. So here we can, for example, use blueprints as well. So in most videos, I actually just started to instance the static models, but we can also instance blueprints. So now we show you a bit more about that. So in Houdini, we have our setup. Let's first calculate a couple positions where we can place this. And I'm going to go here to this uh, line and I will do a resampling of that. And with this resample, I'm going to actually increase it to a higher amount. Uh, so here we can view this and each point now will represent what the structure could be. So maybe we can go even higher, like eight. So at these points, we will have structures. Now, what we need to do here as well is we need to calculate the rotation of that. Uh, we can use something which is called orient along curve. And with that, what I can do is we can grab my actual normal curve and plug it in over here. So we calculate the rotation from this curve, and then we can basically transfer over the data. So we can just use an attribute transfer and transfer over that rotation data. Then with that all set up, um, we are ready to test it out by just using an instance. So create an instance node. Then here with this, we need to say that we of course want to have an, an real instance. I mean to say what model to use. So here in, in this case, we are going to use a blueprint. So same as before, right click, get a reference. And we're now going to copy paste this into pad. And, and let's also plug this into my system, of course. And I will merge this uh, after uh, this is all done. So here, adding an extra merge and plugging in that data over here. Then make sure you are, of course, saving this. And here, in order to click Rebuild, 
And as you can see, we are now scattering these supports. So they are in the right position and the rotation is only off by 90 degrees and we also need to rotate it. So there are multiple ways of how we can approach this. We can either go back to my blueprints uh, and I can start to tweak the values over here. Or we can, of course, go back to my Houdini system uh, and tweak that uh, there as well. So in Houdini, what I probably want to do with this here, this orientation mode, is we want to set the up factor to always a Y axis. So this will mean up. So by doing so, if we would now save and rebuild here inside of uh, Unreal, we will now have them facing in that right direction. And then we only need to rotate them in 90 degrees. Now there are multiple ways of how we can rotate them. So either we can rotate them here under uh, rotation options, and then we can start to add these roll jaw twist values. What we can also do is we can go here to our instancing node and we have the guides. And if we increase the guide scale, we can see that this is representing how the model is scaled and rotated over uh, certain instances. What we can do is we can go to point transformation and we can go all the way here to rotations. And now, as you can see, we can rotate this uh, with the slider here. So what I will do here is I will need to rotate this uh, 90 degrees. So this red axis, instead of facing this way, should face, for example, that way. So we want to say that we want to rotate around the green axis, the Y axis, and we want to rotate 90 degrees, which in this case is uh, 0.25. So with this node, it's very easy to visualize the rotational instances and to tweak them here. So we now simply just say again, save, and recook our logic here, and now we have that right value. And now we are having these support structures here. So there are some th things you can tweak about this as well, of course. For example, these support structures can only be uh, happening if our rail amount is two, because if I have more rails, uh, you will see that they are not that nicely. Or you can, for example, switch between different models based on this rail number. So what you can do is you can then build a switch node for that. So here in our system, we can just, so we can use this switch node. You can just even copy this and you can paste it over here. And what we can do with this logic is we can say uh, it's not equal to two. And we can just quickly place a null node with that as well and plug it in like so. Um, and we'll switch the result here. So when our amount is not equal to two, we won't use this. When our amount would be equal to two, we will use this system. So that's how we can implement that. So let's uh, hit a recook of that. And now we don't have that anymore. So that's like a quick way of, of how we can add that or not add that. And this, so this way might be some inspiration on you on improving this tool, adding more different features, adding more different types of things you can do with this tool. For Project Titan, we just wanted to have like a very basic tool that outputs a rail like this. And that was more enough for our project. But for you, but for your project, you might want to explore different cases like I showed you here. Maybe we, maybe you have like different behaviors based on the amount of rails, for example. So that was it for these videos. So I basically showed you now how we can open this fully in real. I showed you how we can instance static models and also blueprints uh, on in Houdini with Unreal Engine. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.